Hi guys, how are you doing and welcome back. I was looking for a PDF editor with all features if I would have Adobe Acrobat Pro. The Pro version from Adobe Acrobat of course has all the bells and whistles for editing, merging, splitting, but also all the security features which you can find in PDFs nowadays, right? You can protect it with a password, have secured forms, etc, etc. So I was looking for a alternative to that because I don't want to add another subscription to already a whole lot of subscriptions we have nowadays. And I wanted something open source. And I think I found the perfect open source PDF editor with all the features. And the best part is it's running on Docker. That means I'm running it in my Unraid server. It's running in a Docker container. It's web-based. It has all the features. It's free. And well, let's get into it. What is Sterling PDF? It's a locally hosted web application designed to perform various operations on PDF files. Their focus or their passion is to create reliable, user-friendly tools. It has to be free, of course. It has to be secure. And a major thing is it has to be private. It has to be private means that the PDF files are only staying on the device you want them to. That means Sterling PDF, it is running on a Docker container. So that means you can run it on even a Raspberry Pi if you want to, right? And you are in control of all the operations and the editing of those files. They are staying on that local device where Sterling PDF is installed. That means that all the privacy is guaranteed because a lot of PDF files, they contain uh, sensitive information, being it private or for the, uh, for the company, for your work. Uh, that means we have to treat that information, those PDF files, very, very securely. Now, Sterling PDF is exactly allowing you to do that. And then the addition, of course, there is no uh, additional fee for it. It is free to use. It is free to use all the features in there. Nothing is behind a paywall. Um, of course, you can donate, and I would strongly suggest to do that. Um, to keep these kinds of nice tools to keep it going and be available for us. So you can install it in Docker. On their website, there is a document, the document section. You can check that out and see how you can run it using a Docker run command or how you can run it using a Docker compose file. I've done, what I've done is I'm running it using my Unraid server. So if I go back to my Unraid server, uh, go to the apps and within the app section, I can just search for Sterling PDF. And you will see it will automatically pop up. Um, I don't have the option, of course, to install it because I am already running it. But we can go into the properties of the Docker container on Unraid. There is not much you need to edit here. Uh, of course, uh, check all the features on the installation guide page and see what every feature is doing. But from a Unraid Docker installation, the only thing I did here was change the port number to a free port number because that's the port number where the web server for, um, for Sterling PDF will be listening. When you've done that, you can then click on apply and Sterling PDF will be up and running on your Unraid server. Now, when you go to the Sterling PDF URL, that's the IP address and the port number, if you open it in your browser, this is the dashboard you will be presented with. As you can see here, it's very nice um, sorted out. You can see the different options you have here. Just scroll down to the bottom and you will see all the options there are for you to use. If you go to the top of the page, you can click on tools and then there will be a menu item which will show you the different features and the options you have. There is also a advanced option, uh, an option to create pipelines even if you need that, uh, if you're doing some DevOps kind of work. So this is very, um, well, for me, it's amazing that a free tool which is running in Docker in the browser has all these options. Otherwise, I would have to pay for Acrobat Pro. I don't want to add that to my subscription stack. Now let's see if I can open a PDF and see if I want to sign one because this is something I do often. I 
scan a document on my scanner and then I open it up and I want to sign it. So if I click on sign, it will ask me, all right, what, where, where is the file located that you want to find to sign? As you can see here, this is a file which has to be um, opened from your local device, being it from your um, from the device you're using the browser on, right? In this case, it's my Mac. Um, I am opening that file. This is a test PDF file. Now it asks me to, what do you want to do for the signature? Do you want to upload a signature image? Maybe you have something already created in Photoshop or some other graphics designer tool. Maybe you want to draw a signature or maybe you want to use text input only as a signature for this document. So what I want to do is I will draw a signature and I will draw a signature here just using my mouse. Very simple. I have a lovely handwriting today for YouTube and sign it. Yes, please. And I will say click on add. It has added it to my document and then I can resize it, of course, but I can also position it somewhere. Let's say I want it to be positioned here. Now my document has been signed. I can click on download and it will generate a PDF document with the signature in that. If I click, if I scroll down to the document, you will see here is my signature and it has added it only to this page because if I go back to this page again, to the sign feature, you can scroll through the pages you have in this document and add a different signature for every page because sometimes you have documents, then you have a small signature here. And at the end of the document, you have to enter the, the large, your large complete signature. So there, those options are all there. Now, another option I often use is compress. Compress, well, that uh, compresses PDF files because sometimes when I'm doing a presentation for a customer and I export that presentation to PDF, well, PowerPoint, it's not that smart in compressing, uh, efficiently compressing images in a PDF. When it's exporting PowerPoint slides, well, what I, what I do then is I grab that PDF, come back to Sterling PDF, and then I can compress it and make it even smaller. So I know that when I email it to the customer, the customer will get it and it will not be bounced because the size is too large or something like that. So this is, this is also an option I use very often to make PDFs smaller. Let's look at a security option I often use as well. So when I have a PDF, I want to send it to a customer. I know that PDF, um, well, it has extra sensitive information. So I want to add a password for it. Then I just go to my Sterling PDF. Um, I click on add password. If I click on password, it will ask me, all right, well, what, where is the file? Where's the PDF file you want to add the password to? And I will add the password here. And you can see, you see, there is a option. This is an owner password. The owner password, that is the master password I will be adding to this PDF. As long as I don't have a master password, I cannot manipulate this document again. That means if I send it out to that customer, the customer can open it with their user password. They, they can then see, well, basically the document will open in a read only option. Then they can see the content. They can go over the content, but they cannot adjust content. This is very handy. If you do something like, um, send a offer to a customer, um, you don't want them to manipulate that PDF document. Just give them their user password. They can open it and see what the content is. There are features and options here as well in how the encryption for that password will be set up. This is very strong. It's a very strong feature I use very often with Sterling PDF while sharing PDFs with, uh, with others. You can also create automation. Uh, you can create a pipeline. What happens if I upload a PDF file? You can create a pipeline for that. You can do other advanced options and features here as well. So again, it's a very feature rich um, PDF manipulation tool, PDF editor. And the nice thing is it's private. It keeps the information on your own device, on your own server, on your own Docker server. It is not sharing any information over the internet and it just works. 
So there you have it, a complete, full-featured, full-blown PDF editor, reader, running in Docker container, and it's free. So that's something I was looking for for a long time. Uh, I think I have found the perfect solution and it meets all the needs and all the requirements I have for a full-blown PDF editor. I'm able to use it from any device I have and it's completely secured in my running in my own environment. It doesn't need a cloud connection, a internet connection. I just pull down the Docker image, configure it on the Docker container on my Unraid server and it runs perfectly fine. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below. Hit that bell icon also. You will get notified when I post a new video. And leave the comments in the comment section below. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. Thank you. Take care. See you. Bye.